Chinese hackers stealing personal information from four and a half million patients at the community health systems. Now, the hospital chain claims that the attacks occurred in April and in June. With more details on these attackers and cybersecurity, I'm joined by Veteran Network's President and Chief Executive Officer Hitesh Sheth. He joins us from San Francisco. Here with me in New York is CrowdStrike Chief Executive Officer and co-founder George Kurtz. His company has been tracking Chinese hackers for years. George, all right, let's uh, begin. Four and a half million pieces of data. Where does this rank in the world of cyber theft? Well, it's certainly one of the larger breaches and certainly one of the bigger in the healthcare space. And, you know, I think it's just another indicator of what we see on a daily basis, just how active the Chinese have been in targeting companies in the U.S. And, and this breach is a little bit different because they're targeting uh, health care information and user information as opposed to just dealing intellectual property, which they're very good at. Hitesh Sheth, is there any way to prevent these cyber attacks? Well, Pim, you, we have a couple of um, data points that we need to be aware of. First and foremost, you know, in the healthcare system and, and most verticals uh, in the enterprise space, more and more devices are getting connected. And the reality is that if you are connected, the odds of you getting hacked are pretty good, number one. Number two, every network is breached. Now, you know, against this backdrop, what is really interesting about what uh, Community Health Systems has done is, is the following. They're talking about bolstering their defenses, number one. Number two, they went and acquired the services of someone like Mandiant to come and do something on the forensic front. When really what we should be focused on is not just worrying about defending ourselves, which we should, not just worrying about worrying about what has happened after the fact, but we can identify attacks as they're happening and understand what they're doing in real time so we can take proactive steps to limit the damage. Now, Georgia, you mentioned that this has been going on for a while. You've been tracking Chinese hackers. Uh, there is something to do with a uh, panda. I wonder if you could describe that. Yeah, so we actually track about 70 different uh, nation state actors around the globe. Uh, pandas happen to be a, a code name or crypto name for any adversary that uh, originates out of China. In this particular group, we've codenamed them Dynamite Panda, and they've actually been very active in stealing intellectual property in the medical device space. Uh, they've been active in the healthcare industry. They've been active in construction, a bunch of other places. Uh, but suffice to say, they're very sophisticated. They rank uh, on the higher scale of sophistication in the actors that we actually track. Uh, but again, looking at this particular case is just one of many dozens that we see almost on a daily basis because it's just so easy to get into most companies because they don't uh, take this proactive approach in being able to identify these adversaries in real time. George, and, and who backs would... these adversaries? Pardon me? Who backs these adversaries, George? Well, in many cases, uh, it's the Chinese government uh, for pandas. Uh, in fact, the Russian government has been very active as well, and we see a lot of cyber criminals. You know, for all of this information, there's certainly a monetary value. If you look at social security numbers and credit card information, there's a value to that on the gray or black market. In this particular case, though, when you look at it, uh, it's interesting because it's emanating out of China. And while if backed by the Chinese government, isn't necessarily used for financial purposes, but a lot of the sensitive information that was taken could be used to reset passwords and gain access to other companies uh, just given the sensitive information how people set their passwords up and what they're, what they're required uh, in terms of resetting those passwords. So it becomes very interesting to gain access to other companies by leveraging this data. Hitesh, is it possible to create an offensive perspective? Can you actually combat this by putting together a network that has false information that could then be stolen by these hackers? Sure. You know, the companies who employ uh, techniques that are known as uh, honeypots, where they try and divert malware to points in the network where they, are, they don't really contain real assets. Um, but, you know, honestly, we, we can talk about the Chinese and we can talk about other nation states and, and et cetera. The reality is that the scope and the magnitude of people using cyber attacks as a means to gain information and ultimately cause harm to infrastructure is, is of, of, of a scale that we cannot simply deal with using current methodology. So I think it's really critical that enterprise companies, um, boards of directors, take a proactive stand in, in recognizing that a, a solution that is really built around prevention is not enough. 
but they've got to take a priority stand in understanding attacks as they're happening in real time. That, augmented with a, prevent, a prevention strategy, is the best approach to containing cyber attacks. Hitesh, is it possible to, in order to prevent these uh, cyber attacks, is, is it possible then that the information that is lost will then make people much less likely to use digital networks and connected devices, in this particular case, in the healthcare industry? I think it's going to make them definitely much more reluctant and you know there is a natural fear that is instilled as it is you know the healthcare industry is not necessarily the most forward thinking in adopting um, you know current technologies and methodologies and this just further makes them uh, more reluctant to do so um, but look at the end of the day um, the world where devices are connected information is shared readily is the world we live in and it's only going to extrapolate from here on out and you know we have got to deal with it as it is and in this context again prevention is not the strategy it is an insufficient strategy to contain cyber attacks i want to thank you gentlemen very much a test chef of uh, veteran networks uh, joining us from san francisco and george kurtz of crowdstrike here in new york coming up lots